will free will extend it for one a uh, week maybe i am planning to cover it uh, today I'll, i'm planning to finish the network segment today but if you have not understood anything there's no hard line we can extend it uh, for one more uh, session next week also i can take networking there's no problem with that i have told you already that i am not sticking with number of hours so you also don't do that please that when i am ready to spend some time you also feel free to ask but the ultimate uh, aim here it's to learning you should know the concepts Okay, so if you guys don't have any questions, let's proceed and let's start with NSG. Uh, we did discuss about it a little bit in last to last session, but let's uh, revise that. Is it readable enough, guys? Yeah. Okay. So what is NSG, guys? NSG is your network security group. Now, what network security group does? It, it is it contains a list of security rules that allows organize inbound and outbound traffic of your network it can be associated at nick level and subnet level are these two sentences clear first thing it says yes. the the name of nsc or the full form of nsc which is network security group what it is it, it contains a list of security rules it contains a list of security rules now what are those rules for that those rules they allow or deny inbound or outbound inbound or outbound network traffic so whichever traffic which is coming to your machine or which is going out of your machine they they uh, this network security group nsg that controls it it has a control over that traffic for example I don't want internet traffic i can block it i don't want incoming internet traffic i can block it i don't want outgoing internet traffic i can block it right we, we cannot have we don't have the granular access very detailed access like i i want internet traffic but i don't want youtube that we cannot do in uh nsg for that we have firewall so most of the time you will hear the question as well difference between nsg and firewall so we are going to cover that as well here yeah. Now, uh, it can be assigned very important question. They, uh, they do ask, what is the scope of NSG? So NSG can be applied to multiple subnets or NIC. It can be applied to subnet or NIC, actually. That is the next statement. First statement, it can be applied to subnet level or NIC level. Subnet level, it is recommended. Why? I will explain it to you. Right? Next, each subnet and NIC can have only one NSG applied to it at a time. Let me open a paint uh, window and I'll explain it to you. So let's say this is your virtual network. This is your virtual network within that you have one default subnet, you have prod subnet, you have gateway subnet, and XYZ subnet. Okay. Or simply subnet 1, subnet 2, subnet 3, subnet 4. These are subnets. Can we have a machine without subnet, by the way? I mean, any, any resource for that matter. I'm saying I don't want to have uh, subnets. I will directly have a machine hosted on uh, vnet is it possible no 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 right so subnet has to be there right so let's say we have these subnets okay now uh, the first statement it says after the definition of uh, nsg that NSG can be applied at the subnet level or at the NIC level. So let's assume these are your virtual machines in your subnet. On virtual machine, we have a part which is called NIC. What is the full form of NIC, guys? Network interface card. 
Yes. And why, why do we use it? So, um, because of that, uh, it is possible to access the internet or network without NIC. To give I mean, the public uh, they... ID. Uh, public IP address. No, both, both are incorrect. NIC is for the IP address. Be it public, be it private. You want to use it internet. You don't want the, to use internet. Uh, it no, connects the virtual network. No, no. It, it's simple. NIC, it's network mm -hmm. interface card. It is a hardware mm -hmm. which is responsible to have your uh, IP address. For example, in your phone, you have SIM card. It is a piece of hardware, right? Similarly, NIC, it's a piece of hardware. It is a hardware which is responsible to hold your IP address. Like you have your SIM card in your mobile phone, which is responsible to have your uh, mobile number. Similarly, we have NIC uh, on your computer and laptop. But here, everything is virtualized. So even NIC is virtualized here. Virtualization is nothing. We have a hardware over there. It is just dividing that with many computers. Is this clear, guys? What is NIC? It is a hardware, a piece of hardware. Network interface card, which is responsible to hold your IP configuration. Without NIC, you cannot have a uh, IP address on machine. If there is no NIC, you cannot have. There is no place you can uh, put IP address somewhere. Is this clear to everyone, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your network security guard, your NSG, that can be applied at NIC level or at subnet level. But what is it saying? That every subnet or NIC can have only one NSG. It cannot have multiple NSGs at the same time. So if this is NSG1, let's say this is Network Security Group 1. This is Network Security Group 2. This is 3. Let's stick to three. So if I assign this IP address, this if I assign this network security group to this subnet, these are subnets, right? If I assign to this mm -hmm. sub, uh, subnet, then I cannot assign this one. Wherever I'm marking red, that is not possible. That black is possible. So this is not possible. And also to have this is not possible. Got it, guys? Only one yes. network security yes. group at a time. At subnet level. Similarly, at NIC level. If I have one network security group assigned to this NIC directly on the NIC. Directly on the NIC, I have NSG2 and I have NSG1 on subnet level. So then assigning this either here or here it is not possible got it yes yes okay what do you think is this possible uh, uh sohil bhai uh nsg1 uh, is up, uh, assigned to subnet one right hmm. so is it possible that nsg2 also i can assign to nick level Yes, you can. Two NSG. Why? Yes, yes, one you can. One for subnet and one for NIC. Yes, you can. I just showed you, right? I just showed you that this is possible. This is not possible. The moment you have already one subnet, either at the NIC level okay. or at the subnet level, then you cannot have the second. But applying one at subnet level, applying another one at NIC level in the same subnet, it is possible. Okay, understood. Got it, guys? This is possible. In fact, I, I would say more than possible. This is normal. You will see this in many cases. In fact, now we are going to see this. Why are we doing that? Uh, how is it impacting? Which one overrides which one? We are going to discuss that everything. But this is possible. Is the base clear? 
the basic concept of NSG, the, the, the scope of yes. NSG, where it applies. Is this clear, guys, yes. to everyone? Yes, yes. Okay, now, yes. NSG1 and NSG, I have applied NSG1 to subnet, and I'm an, applying NSG1 here. Do you think it is possible? Yes. Yes. But does it make any sense? No. 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 Right. right. Now, <clears throat> this is uh, about applying NSGs on subnets. So uh, only one NSG can apply can be applied on subnet, or I would say associated with a subnet or NIC at a time. But assigning one network security group to multiple subnets is possible. This is possible. That only I have only one network security group in the environment. No other network security group. Imagine. So I can assign it here. I can assign it here. I can assign it here. Wherever I want. I mean, if I have already assigned it to a subnet, assigning to a, a, a NIC doesn't make any sense. But just for your information, I'm informing or I'm mm -hmm. explaining that this is possible. You can assign one network security group with multiple resources. With multiple uh, resources, isn't only two resources are uh, fit or good enough to uh, associate with uh, NSG. One is uh, NIC. Now that NIC can be with anything. NICs are not always with virtual machine. You will see in uh, upcoming classes, NIC we can assign with storage account as well. So we are not saying virtual machine. This one gets associated. This NSG gets associated with NIC and subnet. Take your NIC, kisi ka bhi ho sakta hai. A, a storage account pe bhi NIC hum dekhenge. Right? So it gets applied to NIC and your subnets. So one network security group can be associated with multiple NICs, but multiple network security group cannot be associated with one NIC. And same goes for subnet. Is this clear, guys, to everyone? Yes, yes. Yes. Yes, uh, Sonali, Razak bhai, Ghazala, Munir, is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, very basic thing again, before we go ahead uh, and talk about the rules and priorities, etc. Very common thing. Let's say if NSG1 is applied here, Okay, or NSG1 is applied here to a NIC level of VM1 and NSG2 is applied here, right? At the subnet level. And now there is an outbound. Whenever I say outbound traffic, uh, whatever is going out from this machine, let's say you're sitting on the machine, you open the browser and you access facebook.com, youtube.com or you're sending some email, you're sending some data. Uh, you're sharing a file that is the outbound traffic for this machine. What will be the inbound traffic? Let's say this is a web server and you are hosting a website on this server, but someone from outside is trying to access to your machine using your IP address just to check your website, right? Or your domain name. Or someone is trying to take RDP to your machine. That is the inbound traffic. You are trying to take in a uh, RDP from this machine. This machine is the same. RDP lene ja raho. This will be outbound traffic. Is this clear, guys? Inbound and outbound? Yes, yes. Everyone clear yeah. with inbound traffic and outbound traffic? No, yes. a bit confusion. Any traffic which is generated from your VM. This is your VM1. VM1 se jo bhi traffic generate hoga na, you are trying to access internet. Aapko VM1 pe, uh, browser open karna hoga, google.com, youtube.com, facebook.com, whatever you're trying to access, you will type it in the browser and that request will go out from here, right? So this is outbound traffic for your VM. You are mm -hmm. sending some traffic, you are accessing something. So pehla request aapne bheja, that is an outbound traffic. You are trying to take RDP. Is machine pe better ho. Internally, this machine says machine ka RDP leni ki try karte ho. By the way, is it possible to take RDP within two subnets? These are in same VNet and different subnets. Yes. Can I take the RDP directly? Yes. 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 Subnets talk to each other. Right. So you're taking, trying to take RDP to this machine. 
you are trying to access some file on this machine you are trying to access some website over the internet facebook.com youtube.com you're trying to send an email you are trying to share some file within the network you are trying to uh, create a share folder and send link to everyone in the network you are uh, giving a command of print. You are giving a command of scan. Whatever you are doing from this machine, this is called your outbound traffic. Mm -hmm. Clear now? What is outbound yes. traffic? Similarly, yes, yes. someone is trying to take RDP to your machine internally or externally. Irrespective of which IP they are using. Right? Internally or externally. Someone is trying to take RDP to your machine. Someone is trying to use a website which is hosted on your server. Like I shown you my server, right, on which I have a website. I shared an IP address with you guys and from browser you guys connect, try to check, right? Though you are not taking RDP, you are not sending a message or anything, but through browser you are trying to access my website. Yes, guys, do you remember that? Yes. Yes. So that was an inbound traffic for me. You are trying to take RDP. You are trying to send a file. You are trying to share a file with me or, or anything. Or in this network, let's say if there's not VM, in this subnet, if I have a printer, you are trying to access that. That is inbound traffic for me, for this VM or for this subnet. Is this clear? Yes. Inbound yes. and outbound traffic? Now, yes. basic questions. Okay, I'm not talking about anything. Uh, uh, not, not talking about... Uh, rules or priorities and technical terms very basic and logical questions here at this nsg even if you think of a of a security guard of a, a college or maybe hostel and just try to make the analogy you will understand it very easily and you will be able to answer it here at the main gate or the main nsg why am i calling it main now because it this one is connected to subnet so i'm calling it main though it's not a technical term nothing okay there's no main there's no yeah this is just for your explanation as of now this is our main nsg why because it is uh it is associated at the subnet level main gate hai aapka subnet samaj lije, right and this is at your doorstep this is your at your doorstep so this is the uh you you can say a short one or this is the main one and this is just a a side subnet or side uh NSG, right? If you just consider them as security guards, etc., then so if I have an outbound traffic of internet, right? Internet ka outbound traffic, hai, but my NSG one has a rule. Ab wo rule kaisa lagta hai? Kya lagta hai? We are going to do that later. Don't worry about it. My NSG one has a rule which says no internet, right? Let's say my door wala watchman, which says no internet. However, the main gate, this rule says internet allowed. I'm okay with it. As of now, just talking about the outbound traffic, guys, not the inbound one. Okay. Outbound traffic. Now, if I put a request from VM1 for internet, so my main security guard, in this case, our network security group, NHG2, has allowed the internet. But my NIC network security group doesn't allow the internet. So what do you think? Will I be able to access the internet or not? No. Definitely not, right? Why? Because it is being blocked here itself. This request won't even go here. This request, if this request has to pass, Two network security groups it won't even go till network security group two if you, if you do a trace cert or if you check why it is being blocked you will realize ke wo energy one pe hi block ho gaya. if i had vice and versa will i be able to access the internet let's say if i say internet is allowed here but not allowed here will i be able to access the internet no still no, no. yes but the only difference is at this time you will realize Machine NSG se to internet allowed hai, but at this level it is blocked. Is this clear, guys? The con is concept clear to you? Now we will be yes. talking the technical terms. Isliye main aapko thoda layman mein isko explain kar raho. 
So please try to understand, ask questions if you don't get it. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Right. Similarly, now inbound traffic. Inbound is someone from other side, from someone from internet or someone from subnet is trying to access. Right. Uh, now let's say that here it says internet allowed. Here it says internet not allowed. Now in this case, internet as in web traffic. Web traffic kab hogi? Jab mene apne ispe ek website host kar rakhi hai. So someone over the internet is trying to access my website. So that person sends a request. Will this request go through from here or not? Will it be blocked at this level or not? It will not block at an HG2. It will not block. Why? Because I have allowed the internet traffic in internal as well. For incoming yes. traffic. But if it goes to this one, Ole, let me modify my question again. Okay. Let's see if you guys have understood or not. So, I have a web server. When I'm saying internet, guys, it's a web traffic. Okay. So, I have a web traffic or a web server website. More easy. Website 1 on VM1. And I have website 2. On VM2. Okay. Now, first, I am repeating my questions again. This is outbound traffic. VM2, a person sitting on VM2, it's trying to access internet web traffic. Will it? Will he be able to? Will he or she be able to access the internet or not? VM2. This is our VM. Yes. Why yes? There is no blockage on uh, subnet. Perfect. There is no network security group assigned to its NIC, which is allowing or blocking. So there is no security group at all. But when we go to the next level, a subnet level, main gate is considered kar sakte ho, there is an NSG, but that NSG allows internet. Right? So, yes, you can, this person or this VM, no, no matter which user is there, you are logged in or I am logged in, that is that doesn't bother. So anyone sitting on this machine will be able to access the internet. Is this clear to everyone? Yes. Now, yeah. outbound traffic, someone is trying to access website 2 in VM2. Will he be able to able to will he be able to access the website or not? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Same person immediately tries to access a website on VM1. No. No. Got it, guys? Clear to everyone? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, these we were talking about different NSGs, etc. Now, let's discuss one more scenario here itself on the paint. And then we'll go ahead and start our uh, practical on the portal. Right? So, let's say this is our NSG4. And this is associated directly on the subnet level. So whatever is being applied, it is being applied on both the machines. Right. Just give me one minute, please. So this is, let's say, your VM5, VM6. Okay. This NSG had a rule which says inbound traffic allowed internet traffic is allowed inbound inbound traffic allowed this is this was the rule initially when it was created okay. 
now by the way this is a default rule as well you don't even have to create one now a new manager has been assigned and he sees that uh, internet is being misused or let, let's say i'll call it outbound so that real stick like okay it is being uh misused etc right now he says outbound traffic of the internet should be blocked or in this case, we'll call it deny. It is allowed and deny. These are the two terms which we are using. On same NSG, we can have these two rules. Which one will work? Now, so you are trying to, from BM5, you are trying to access YouTube. Will it be allowed or not? It will be allowed, but the it will work only the one rule. Means outbound, either it is allowed or denied. It is according to priority it will take. Right. Obviously, guys, it will be always one rule. If the, you have a conflict, there has to be some mechanism how to resolve the conflict. So what is the mechanism NSG has? Here, if you look at this, the priority number, the lower the priority number is, highest the weightage is. If your priority number, for some rule, it's this one, and you create a new priority with a smaller number, then that rule will be applicable. I shouldn't have taken the example of uh, internet. Internet is already allowed. Oh, let's say internet. What is the priority number of internet, guys? Here, outbound traffic. Which rule is allowing the internet? Allow. 65,000. Allow internet outbound. Yes, rule number two. Simple. These are six rules. Three in inbounds, three in outbounds. Very uniform, very basic. No changes in this. It's been there from long time. So there are six rules. Three inbound rules. Three outbound rules. So rule number two, 65001 is the priority, which says allow internet outbound traffic. Right? So now if I want to deny it, I cannot delete this rule because this one is, this is one of the inbuilt rules, the default rules. Right? If we have a rule, we will delete it simply. That some some something is allowing the rule. Let's delete that. We cannot de delete this rule, so we have to override this rule. So what we will have to do is create another rule, like this is allowing. Let's deny all outbound traffic. Select internet. Select deny here. The only thing you'll have to focus on that keep the number smaller to this. By the way, in this case, you cannot have this number. I'll tell you why. This is a chota number aega, and you will be able to deny the traffic. Why? Because all these numbers are assigned to default one. It's different. And when we start creating a rule, any rule, forget the internet. Chalo, internet ko agar, agar hum hai. Let's say we are trying to create our own rules uh, that XYZ thing should not be allowed. We'll come to that now. Kya kya options hai isme. Take XYZ is allowed. As of now, I have created this. So when I start creating this, I will be able to give the priority number between 100 to 4096 only. I cannot use this 6500 wala, 65000 wala range. Only this number I can use. Now, if I want to do XYZ is denied. Simple option. One is I can delete the rule. Jo pehla rule banaya because that is not a default rule. I can delete it. I can simply delete it or deny ho jayega. Or I can amend that rule. Isi allow ko mein deny bhi kar sakta hon, Right? But for some reason, I don't want to do that. I want to keep that and I want to create another rule. So I'll be, I'll be able to create another rule and I will be able to say it deny. And then again, I can uh, choose a number between 4096 and 100. However, the condition is this should be a smaller number to allow. Then only you will be able to deny the traffic. Let's say here if I had selected 150. So here I'll select 140. Now, which one will work? Deny or allow? Deny. Deny. Same Deny. logic applies to inbound, same logic applies to outbound traffic. We could have easily changed this allowed to deny. We can we could have done that. We could have deleted also. We can do that easily. But for some reason, if you want to have another, you can have this also. So uh, remember all the logics. If someone is saying that I want to uh, deny X, Y, Z thing, why don't you delete that simply? But what cannot be deleted or amended? these default rules so if an interviewer is asking about internet your sh answer should not have that amended or deleted why because default rule cannot be amended or cannot be deleted 
there you definitely have to create another rule internet is denied or deny right you will have to select a number between 40900 and 4096 and it is obvious even if you select 4096 it is obvious that it is going to be smaller from the default number you you guys can see the priority numbers of default rules right you can't even go to that range it doesn't even allow us is this clear guys to everyone Uh, Selva, it is in our hand to select number 150. Yes, between 14. 100 to 4096, it is in your hand. Oh, and it will be in the ticket, whatever the ticket we are going to... Uh, yes, you will definitely get it. Here. Yes, yes. When, when you get a low-level diagram, you will definitely get mm -hmm. it because your architect, they will uh, go ahead and check your current energy if there is any. If not, if they are creating from scratch, you will have it that, uh, okay, these are the rules uh, we'll get by default. And with this... Uh, now, while creating machine, I never explained this to you, but always told you that we'll see this later. We will see this later. So let's quickly check this. And uh, one more thing, uh, when uh, we were allowing and denying the uh, uh, rules at the time, we have taken 150 uh, number and for the denying, we have taken 140. So what was the logic behind it that it will deny only because I didn't get it? Lower the priority, high is, higher the weightages. If your priority is low, that will take the precedent. Lower number will override the higher number. Okay. That it is how they have designed it. In the, uh, descending order types. Yes. Okay. So while creating the machine, you guys have always checked. I have always asked you to check some boxes and we didn't discuss what they were these boxes now what are these these are nothing you are allowing these traffic otherwise how are you able to take rdp to your machine look at this rdp ka yahan par koi traffic allow nahi kar rakha hai right but when you create a machine and while creating you check this aapne kya kiya hai inbound ports ko inbound rules ko allow kiya hai if you go ahead and check this nsc the network security group which is being created which will be assigned to this NIC level that NSC will have all these rules. We'll go ahead and check this once. We'll create it and check. Only 30 seconds are left. I'll be stopping the session and we'll join without any break.